Okay, we're in 3ds Max. We're going to take a look at the out of range for our graph editor. So I'm going to open up the curve editor and we'll take a look at this animation. So when I click on the little ball, you'll see I do have some animation frames here. And if I click play, we just have that little jump down. So I'm just going to go into the motion tab and then we're going to just click on motion path and you see we have a slight little path here with just three frames. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up under edit, control, and then go to the out of range types. And what this allows you to do is add to the animation. So you have your range and your range is where your keyframes are and then anything beyond that is your out of range. So by default, it's constant. We're going to look at cycle and click OK. And you'll see we get a straight line in our path. And it's just cycling and jumping back to the original frame. I'm going to go back to 0. We're going to go back down to the out of range types. We'll look at loop. And then with loop, we're just getting a similar look. Um, we'll take a look at one that will be different, linear. So with linear, it's just continuing to slowly move. Again, you'll get a different look with different ones. So here we're going to look at ping pong and ping pong will just go back and forth. No one we're interested in is this relative repeat. So when we click on this one, click OK, you'll see it continues the animation curve. So the animation continues after and before the keyframes I have. So as long as your timeline is, that's how long your frames are going to repeat. And I'm just going to hit play. Actually, let me move this over a little. I have a couple more steps I've made. And now when I hit play, it'll just continue as long as the timeline exists. So that can be really handy if you have a complex cycle and you're just cycling. Um, I can also take and show frames behind as well. So you see it is existing before. And that is the out of range types.